Now, I don't know if this ever happens to you, but in this chest, I have a ton of tropical fish. Where did I get those tropical fish? Well, probably from a tropical ocean, but I can't find any coral. And I really wanted to use some coral and maybe some sea pickles to start making an underwater base today, or more accurately, an underwater expansion to our base. I thought that that would be cool, but there's no coral here, so I might need to go find wherever I got these from. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, there's no coral. Now, first place I want to check is in the nether. There are some portals that I haven't put signage on yet. Uh, we, we worked really hard on this a couple episodes ago, but there are a couple more portals. I didn't show them in the episode because there's a lot of just unmarked ones. This one goes to the Mesa, but past here, or wait. Nope, this is the wrong tunnel. Oh yeah, I think it's over here. Let's clear this guy out. Yeah, 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 this is the way. <laughs> uh, don't ask me why this villager is here. I've just left him there because, I don't know, he's like a backup villager. If all the world, all the villagers in our world die, then we have a backup villager in the nether. Although honestly, the backup villager would probably die before the other ones. So, there's a portal here, and I don't know where it goes. Maybe it goes to the uh, tropical ocean. Oh, what? Hey, this isn't my farm. I didn't know I had another one of these. <laughs> I have like a, a farm in quotation marks that has like a bunch of oh whoops whatever well that's cool let me just snag a couple of these to mark it all right now at least I won't forget what that is um <laughs> uh, I guess we're gonna have to keep looking I guess this is a zombie piglin village. Can they turn villagers into zombies? You know, there's no villagers in this village. Oh wait, I hear one. Oh, there he is. Hey, wait a second. <laughs> okay, the zombies don't seem to be going after these guys. Yeah, apparently they can escape. Well, that's a problem for a different day. The villager breeder at our main base is working fine, so there's no reason to really worry about these guys right now. I'm pretty sure I built this giant pit or like moat around it because I didn't have enough for fences. <laughs> oh boy. All right, let's go. Let's go hunt down a tropical ocean. <laughs> no way. This looks like the right color. I don't see the coral at and the like lit up areas, but I have not found a mushroom island before. Or I think I've seen one in passing, but I never like went back and found it. Anyway, had no idea this was here. This is kind of cool. We could probably do something interesting with this. <laughs> no. Did I forget to bring obsidian? I think I did. I think I checked in here. Yeah. Hmm, you know, usually I have some obsidian either in the emergency kit or the supplies box, but uh, seems that there is neither, unless there's some in the valuables. Hmm, I could probably use some organizational <laughs> uh, improvement, but I did see some ruined portals around here, so maybe we'll go snag the obsidian from that. Right down here. I think yes uh oh oh I think there's enough just barely <laughs> okay well actually we should look in the chest hey oh no flint and steel I know I have a flint and steel but it's nice to have another one what's that protection for oh that's funny oh pro tip in case you didn't know or in case you forgot you can get infinite air from magma blocks all you have to do is just hold shift on top of them. You don't even need uh, aqua affinity. Like even if my bubbles are going down way faster. Ta-da! 
So if you ever find one of these and you don't have aqua affinity yet or you don't have a water bucket, you can just snag one of these. And you're like, oh, I need water. Ta -da! Infinite water. Or air, actually. Infinite, infinite air underwater. There you go. All right. There we go. One portal to the Mushroom Kingdom. <laughs> cool. Ooh. This is the stuff we're looking for. This, like, blue-green water. <laughs> Getting chased by phantoms. Yeah, I bet there's some tropical fish over here. No coral, though. Maybe that's what happened, is I found the tropical fish, but no coral. So all this time, I thought that you can only get as much coral as is spawned when the world is generated. That is actually wrong. You can use bone meal in warm oceans on like sand or something. Like if you just use it down here, I don't have any on me. I'm gonna go get some shortly. But yeah, uh, it spawns like seagrass wood, which is super cool. <laughs> ah, what a bummer. Yeah, okay, so you can bone meal the coral and get the coral fans. So I'm not going to collect the coral fans as much because the blocks are what is super valuable here. And apparently the coral blocks can increase like the efficiency of your sea pickle farm. Um, so very valuable. But we potentially might want to find another coral place. Because, like, if, if I break all these blocks, like, this isn't going to be enough to surround our whole island if we transplant this coral uh, reef at our island. So, we might want to find more. So, this is one of the areas that I wanted to spruce up. And I don't know if that's going to be enough coral, but we're going to just test a few things. I want to see if the bone meal actually works in a regular ocean. Or if that's only in the warm motion. So we can try that right here. Yes, yeah, so we get some seagrass. Oh. Alright, so I just use like, I don't know, 20 bone meal. Didn't get a single coral thing. So I'm gonna guess that. That only works in the warm ocean. Also, this is really, really deep. So we might have some of the coral grow off of the walls because we want to actually see it, you know? I tried to look at a lot of the coral shapes to maybe replicate them here. So we'll see how well that works. Um, also, the sea pickles, we need to farm these up because I want to put them underwater like everywhere. Because particularly at night, these things are going to make any water area just look that little bit more inviting. Ooh, we can put them on dirt too. So we could just hide them like in here. It's basically water lighting. So that would be cool. I already like this a lot better. It makes the water a lot more inviting. Like you actually want to swim down in it, you know, and look at things as opposed to uh, this. <laughs> I, uh, I used a little bit of the bone meal down here, and I think I'll get some more to fill out this area. Because this area actually generated before kelp even existed, so <laughs> that's why it's so bare. Um, but I tried to do like the same coral structures, but then have them be pointing out of the wall. And then I tried like this little like twirl around the uh, support of the house, because I feel like that kind of makes sense, and it looks kind of interesting. And of course the sea pickles will really stand out at night, but in the day they're kind of like, meh. And I think that if I add a bunch of colors, that will really make it look awesome. Yeah, this is, this is pretty cool. It's kind of wild. I like it. It's very colorful. The thing was, I wanted to do this all the way around the island, and that is maybe not going to happen. All right, so sea pickles, how do you farm them? I don't actually know, but I do have a guess. I think if you have... Yes, okay, so you bone meal the, uh, the nearby sea pickles and then it has a chance to spread. 
gotcha. So now the question is going to be how far do they spread? Actually, let's look at this. Ooh. Yeah, it's lit up a little bit. You can actually see under the water. How does this look over here? You can't really tell that it's lit up. It just looks nicer. Because if we take these away, yeah, it gets darker and like mustier almost, you know? Like you're in a back alley. But this kind of makes it look like you're supposed to be here. Which you're, actually you're probably not, but <laughs> it makes down here a little nicer. All right, so how far do these things spread? Is it just one block? Well, that was two. Because what we could potentially do is just have like a, a plus and it could just spread out in any direction and then we just bone meal this. Well, I ran out of bone meal already. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be two blocks that it spreads out from. So we could just hide a sea pickle farm in one of these corals and that would be kind of a cool thing. And then we would have a reason to come over here too, like there'd be a functional reason. And it's kind of fun, like if you make new things to have there be a reason for you to go over there. So there was a couple of shapes to the coral. There's this plus one that we'll probably use. Um, it's kind of like a, a trident almost, but on all sides. And then there's like rings and there's kind of like a box one. So I'm thinking that this is probably the best for a sea pickle farm. Like if we just made, <laughs> okay, so many of these guys spawn, it's just ridiculous. I was actually thinking about connecting, my base I think is like three blocks that way. And I kind of want to connect it to this underwater part so we can have like underwater base sections, which would be really cool. But I don't know, with all the, uh, the drowns that spawn, it's kind of annoying. So, if we just make the base of the farm, <laughs> it's kind of a stretch to call it a farm, but... And then we could have maybe some of the forks come up, kind of copying the, the pink design, or the purple, I guess. Oh my word, <laughs> how many of these guys? All right, and then we... Take out these corners, because that's what the uh, naturally generated ones do. And it gives it more of a uh, stringy look, which is good. Oh, wait, we need some, some extensions on the bottom here. Something like this. We'll make it a beefy one. And then this will be our backup store of sea pickles. <laughs> All right, so then in the middle, we can have our actual store of sea pickles. Well, that works pretty well. <laughs> and then you just clear it out and keep going. And I suppose you can clear out the middle section if you want as well. So there's almost something to be said for like just bone mealing each new one. But in that, in that scenario we would probably want more spawning spaces so that we could just bone meal everything. So let's see, if we put one in the center and we just... Oh, it's a two by two square. Okay, so this was a really good idea. Interesting. This is why you try random things. You get random results, sometimes really good ones. <laughs> it's all filled up. Let's see how much we get. Let's make sure there's none above and then we have two stacks and 20. So, how much does this farm, in quotation marks, give us? <laughs> and then, of course, we replant one in the center, because we don't want to just lose all of our sea pickles. So it looks like we got a stack and 36. So about a stack and a half. That's pretty good. <laughs> Can the sea pickles replace the grass? It doesn't look like it. Ooh, you really don't want to click on an empty spot then. Oh man, and another stack in a little bit again. Cool, we have an infinite source of sea pickles. We can start spamming these things all over the world. <laughs> awesome! So I'm spamming these things in the river, and this might be too much, but I mean, this is the first time 
we've had the opportunity to do this. So we might go overboard at first a little bit and we can we can rein it back in afterwards. Um, but what I was noticing is they look nicer in the sand. And I think it's because of their little intestines or whatever those things are. Maybe that's the flower. Um, Oh, I'm thinking of a sea cucumber. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, but yeah, the little, that part, it kind of goes with the sand. So it looks nice here. But then if you look in the dirt, it's kind of like, ugh. Like, what? why are these things here, you know? So I wonder if we should maybe be swapping out all of this dirt in the water for sand. At least anywhere that we're trying to put the sea pickles in and trying to maybe even put some of the coral in or something. So my base is somewhere in here, and I don't know exactly where to dig to get to it. This place looks kind of suspicious, but it, it could be anywhere. Um, I want to have a connection with my base to um, the underwater location. Though I have to find the base first. Maybe it'd be easier to do from the inside. <laughs> you see the uh, water dripping? I do believe, oh, yep, there's the gurgling. I hear that all the time when I'm working down here. This is where I keep a lot of the command block contraptions. Like, uh, this is the one that makes the Endermen return to the end, so they're not, like, just destroying my island. I don't know what that guy's doing there. These are the, uh, the chest selectors, I think. Oh, no, those are the villager teleporters. The chest selectors are somewhere else. But, yeah, anyway, a lot of stuff down here, so we should probably be careful. Let's just make a little area because I, I want there to be like a really smooth transition between the two but to do that we're gonna need to break through first oh what side of the island are we on oh we're in a totally different location oh here we go so it's over in this corner pretty much straight that way um, in fact this tunnel that goes nowhere, we might be able to turn into a water entrance, which would be super cool. Because I want to have a mixture... Oh, I don't have torches. <laughs> Just sea pickles. Oh, they don't have any light when they're not underwater. All right. Come on, be water. Oh, here we go. Here's some sand. There's the water. What? Oh, I guess it has to be a full water block. Aha! So we're... Oh, about right here. Like, pretty much right where the corner is. That's kind of convenient. <laughs> you know, I need a, an entrance that these guys can't get in. Oh, there's some copper. So the cool thing is, because there is conduit power, um, I don't have any trouble with underwater breathing around here. And... Uh, swimming and seeing in it and everything so that all works really great so what that means is that we don't necessarily have to have everything inside of a structure uh, i i did think it'd be cool to have like maybe some little structure like over here like maybe just imagine that this was the base of a glass dome um <laughs> obviously <laughs> not this shape but like if it was a if it was a full circle and then maybe there'd be a door here I don't want to use those. Uh, we're just kind of prototyping it just to see uh, how it might end up looking. And then we could have some sort of walkway, maybe with glass. Actually, I think I have glass on me. We could we could see... Oh, my. The haste beacon is, is very strong. <laughs> These guys are going to just walk into my base, aren't they? <laughs> All right, now that drowns have a free entrance to the base... <laughs> We should probably figure out some sort of gate mechanism that uh, is really easy to for us to get through and it stops the water. So a simple solution to stop the water would just be, uh, I think a moat right here would work. We close this off and then reopen it. I think, oops, I'm scared to, oh haste isn't on, okay perfect. Yeah, so we'll get like a perfect little waterfall. I um, wonder if we could put half slabs there or something so that we can just walk over it, no big deal. And then we'll need a way to stop the zombies. 
Wait, can they not figure it out? <laughs> it's too advanced. <laughs> he can't figure out how to get through. All he has to do is, is just like take one step and he's like, it's too hard. Okay, so this might actually be good enough. Oh yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna get the glass so we could look at the, uh, maybe like a little mini walkway. I think it should just be in the inner chest. Yep, there it is. So we have. Okay, that scared me. I I don't know. I never see it coming, and then it just it's just a shocker every time. So we had a little glass walkway, and then we maybe had it meet up with this. So nothing too fancy, just something like this, and we can just kind of walk through. And actually, we could swim through as well. And then that just helps us kind of keep on track and not get lost. And, but also, we can like stand here and look at things. Or, you know, get attacked by these guys. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, this is this is really cool. If we, uh, if we spruce up this area, this would look really nice. And imagine if this was a glass dome. Like, I'm, oh, I'm out of glass. <laughs> Oh boy. I'll just make like a little makeshift window. Everything's kind of makeshift this episode. This is kind of a, a prototyping episode, you know? And then if we have like some glass here, we can like look out and see. Nothing on this side, but. <laughs> if there was a window here, we could like look out, see the stuff, do whatever would be in here, which I don't know yet. Uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a cool area. I put some sea pickles along the sides because then uh, if we go up here, yeah, it should light up the pathway a little bit so we can see it. Oh my goodness. How did he get two shots in so fast? Crazy. <laughs> I'm building this little area up and I'm just going to see there's a drown right there. And I'm going to see if he can figure out how to get in here. If he can't, I'm honestly just going to leave this and pretty it up, you know? No no extra function required. Uh, if he does get in, we'll figure something out. I don't even know if this is the same one. The other one honestly might have despawned. But, uh... They can't figure it out, so... <laughs> There's no reason to change anything. I mean, that's as easy as it gets. Just I put some uh, sea pickles down there just for some light, but yeah. <laughs> he cannot figure it out. It's pretty great. Man, sandstone looks really nice underwater. And so does sand. I don't know, the, the gravel and stone is kind of eh. But the sandstone looks really nice. It makes me want to like swap out all of the stone and uh, gravel, but that would take ages. <laughs> there is not enough time in this episode for that. But look at this though. I mean, the little sandstone dome. I was thinking maybe less of a dome and maybe just give it like a rounded roof and sort of straight sides. And that might look okay. I still don't know what we're going to put in it, but I mean, I, we could put the sea pickle farm in here maybe. I don't know. So there we are. It is, uh, <laughs> the front looks a little funky because of how I had to mess with it so the water wouldn't pour in the room. It's not the most beautiful, but it, it's cool from inside. And I was thinking we could actually just use it to store the sea pickles. And then if we make another one, we could put the coral in it. So it could be like our little, uh, Coral storage area. There we go. Man, it doesn't even fill up half of a double chest. And we'll definitely want to uh, do a little bit more with the sea pickle farm, but I did find a bunch of bone meal. Ah, just straight up stacks of bones. That's from our wither farm, actually. 
There we go. A little bit more sea pickles. And we can put any bone meal we don't use in here as well. It's really convenient being able to just swim back and forth between here. Because my inventory is full. But it's no big deal. Because it's just it's right there. Alright, this is looking really cool. I like it. This whole area is just a lot more interesting than it was. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so, 1.18 is coming out in a week, pretty much. And some of the things are going to be changing, particularly old chunks, trying to mesh with the new chunks. And there's a potential for player structures to get overwritten. And so we're going to do something very weird here and put doors inside of the building. Now, the idea is that hopefully the air blocks inside of here won't get filled with something random. Um, and I'm going to experiment with a few different types. And really, there's no conclusion for this until 1.18 comes out. But we'll just set up some weird things and see if that protects our houses at all. That way when the new update comes out, I can tell you what stuff worked for protecting your base and, and what stuff didn't. So I'm going to try and place some stone blocks, because that's like normal terrain. And so we'll see, we'll see if this all gets replaced in the next video, basically. <laughs> That is the general idea. Oh, can I place gravel on top? Ah. And I'm really, really hoping that the chests don't get overwritten. Um, that's why we have some stuff out here. This is kind of our backup um, if, if those chests get broken. And this could potentially happen anywhere in the world. Um, so, yeah, you probably want to make a backup before 1.18 comes out. Oh boy. And there is actually a chance that some of this won't get overwritten at all. So, you know, everything might be totally fine. And that would obviously be the best solution. But we're preparing just in case. Now, based on the way that they were talking about it in the patch notes, it sounds like it's going to be like chunks that border the new generation that are going to get messed with. The stuff in the middle of your area probably is fine. So that's kind of what I'm hoping. And then we'll add in some more gravel because that's kind of a natural generation block. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this is a maze now. <laughs> Alright, so it's crammed full of things that hopefully will make the new generation think that this is all part of the structure and it won't just delete air blocks out of the middle. Because um, <laughs> I think the patch note said it'll either be intact, which is the best scenario, uh, buried, so like totally covered with dirt or gravel, I guess, in this case, because it potentially, you know, the terrain comes up and like totally gets all inside the house or the worst possible scenario which is really scary and it's another reason that we have all these blocks here um, player structures could become deteriorated uh, so they they could deteriorate and lose some of their blocks so like some of these some of these blocks might be missing and by putting a bunch of unnecessary blocks that also could make it more likely for the deterioration algorithm to pick some of those instead of the blocks that we actually care about. So it's just a random little test. <laughs> the answer will come with the next video, which is going to be around when 1.18 comes out. So that'll be cool to see. And hey, you know, maybe we'll get lucky and nothing will actually be broken. That, that's obviously the ideal scenario. But uh, that's going to be it from me. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Talon's Oasis. And thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Later, later. Thank you.